If someone were to ask the name of this city, the answer would be easy. New York, of course. But take a trip in any direction, near or far, and you come to a city like this. What is its name? It really doesn't matter. It could be any one of hundreds of communities. Population, 25,000. Main street with busy stores, banks, and movie theaters. Attractive homes with their neat lawns and their well-groomed look. In size and in the kind of people who live here, it is like many other cities. It was in such a city just a few years ago that a new kind of telephone service, direct distance dialing, was introduced. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. How's my ball player today? Fine. Where's your mother? She's inside. Hi there, dear. Well, what did you find out? We can leave tomorrow. Oh, how wonderful. And if we get an early start, we should be in Chicago by Tuesday afternoon. But we'd better let Mother know. She isn't expecting us until the weekend. Yeah, that's right. Why don't you call her? I think I will, right now. Look, Daddy, see the magic? Do you know where I put that little blue book? Here it is. Thank you. Now let's see if we can find Granny's number in here. There it is. All right, while I dial it, you go and get Brother and I'll let you both say hello. Okay. All right. Johnny! Three, one, two, three, six, seven, Did you have the car checked today, Dave? They changed the oil and reset. Did they rotate the tires? Did they what? Oh, hello, Mother. This is Jane. Oh, oh, no, dear, we're all fine. I just wanted to tell you that we've changed our plans. We're leaving tomorrow. Isn't that wonderful? Simple, wasn't it? Oh, yes, Mr. Children. She just picked up the telephone and dialed her own call direct to the distant telephone. Simple and yet you're seeing the results of many, many years of coordinated effort in research, engineering, and operating experience. It's hard for us to realize today that in the early 1880s, the telephone was considered a newfangled contraption. Boy operators manned the switchboards in those days, and it was an adventure to be able to talk with friends or relatives on the other side of town. The telephone at last was filling a deep human need. The need of people separated from one another to talk with each other. Soon, alert girl operators replaced the boys. New types of instruments were developed. And the telephone grew up with a growing America. The demand for telephone service snowballed. Indeed, the use of the telephone became so tremendous that by the 1920s, dial service was rapidly being introduced to help handle the increased volume of calls. As the calls increased, more operators were needed. More calls to handle meant more jobs to do and more people to fill those jobs. This has been the story all through the development of the telephone. For instance, in the days when there was little or no dial service, the Bell system had 270,000 employees. Now that about nine out of every 10 telephones are dial, the number of employees has more than doubled. But there was still more to the story of change in American life. As villages became towns, and towns became industrial cities. People's interests broadened. Where those early citizens were thrilled to telephone across town, people now wanted to call towns and cities across the nation. Finally, they wanted their voices to span the oceans, and they did. Truly, America had grown up. All of which brings us back to our typical city. It proved to be a fine testing ground for the new direct distance dialing service. 
It gave the answers to some important questions. The customers liked to dial their own distant calls. They found it fast and easy. The new service was ready for widespread installation. So the Bell system went forward with its program as fast as the complicated equipment could be made and installed. Today, many towns and cities have this new service. You may not be dialing your own distant calls yet, because the equipment that makes this service possible is among the most complex that man has ever devised, and it takes a great deal of time to manufacture and install it. When you dial a number, the equipment obediently receives the information, stores it up, and remembers it. It searches out an electrical pathway for your call, choosing the one that is most suitable at a given instant. If it finds one pathway blocked, it tries another, and another, and another. If it runs into trouble, it automatically reports the trouble and its probable source. Parts of the equipment connected with other parts exchange information. They do this sometimes by a touch system such as the blind use in reading braille. Sometimes it's done with a stream of electrons flowing through space. Sometimes it uses an elaborate system of musical notes that are heard and interpreted by an electronic ear. But even that's not all of it. Keeping track of the details of the call is done automatically too. When you dial a number, Holes are punched in a continuous tape, representing your telephone number and the number you dial. More holes are punched to show the time you start talking, when you finish, and hang up. If you get a busy signal, or the number doesn't answer, no charge is made. If you reach a wrong number, calling the operator and telling her will make certain you are not charged. Since all this information is in the form of tiny holes, the meaning of these tiny holes has to be expressed in words and figures. This is done by running the tape through several machines which assemble the information, translate, sort, and summarize it, figure the length of your call, apply the correct rate, and you guessed it, type your statement. But although the equipment is complex, direct dialing of your own distant call is almost as easy as dialing a local call. All the numbers that you call can be kept in your personal telephone directory. Remember that number Anne and her mother looked up in the blue book? The only difference between that and a local number is the three digits at the beginning. 312 is the code to reach Chicago. If she had called a friend in Los Angeles, she would have dialed 213 and then the telephone number. Cleveland, 216. Boston, 617. Altogether, there are more than 100 numbered areas designated for the United States and Canada. For some time past, area numbers like these have been used by telephone operators in completing distant calls. Over the years, we have seen the results of a successful formula. Planned research to anticipate the demands of a growing nation. Available resources plus the continued efforts of many people. This combination has given America steady improvements in telephone service. And the story of direct distance dialing points the way to even better telephone service at the lowest possible cost for you today and tomorrow.